If you're in the market for a new sleeping bag for motorcycle camping, or even if you just want to develop a better understanding of sleeping bag features and which ones work best for motorcycle camping, then this video is for you. Stick around. Hi everyone, I'm Tim Collins and this is my YouTube channel FTA Adventures where I make videos that help you have safer and more enjoyable motorcycle trips. So let's jump into the video. Before we discuss the intricacies of sleeping bags, it's important to take a step back and first talk about your sleep system. Your sleep system is made up of anything you put around your body at night and whatever is insulating you from the ground, assuming you're sleeping on the ground. So this would be your sleeping pad, air mattress, or even a cot and also your shelter, sleeping bag, liner, and whatever clothes you're wearing to bed. Those other parts I'm gonna discuss in other videos, but they are all a part of a whole package that makes up your sleep system. It's called a sleep system because your sleeping bag and other components should work together and increase the effectiveness of each piece. With a little planning and strategy, you can assemble the perfect sleep system that carries you comfortably through a wide range of temperatures on your motorcycle campouts. For this video, we'll only be discussing sleeping bags, but it is important to remember that a sleeping bag is only as strong as your sleeping pad and your sleep system is only as strong as the weakest link. That doesn't mean you should just go out and buy the warmest of everything because that could leave you severely uncomfortable on a hot summer camp up. So that's the basics of a sleep system. Let's go ahead and talk about temperature ratings and work our way through all the features and stats you may see when shopping for a sleeping bag. Temperature ratings are likely the first feature you'll notice when looking at sleeping bags. They're a way of telling you how well a sleeping bag will perform in certain conditions. These ratings are similar to R values and are determined in controlled environments. This is very different than the unpredictable nature of motorcycle campouts. That means that temperature ratings are only accurate up to a certain point. Sleeping bag rated at 20 degrees will only work well in 20 degrees if accompanied by a sleeping pad with good insulative properties. This will also depend on your own body. Some people are cold sleepers and others are warm sleepers. It's important to know which one you are before you start shopping for a sleeping bag. Although temperature ratings become more important as temperatures drop, even in warm weather, you want to make sure you have a bag that will keep you comfortable at night without overheating you and causing you to sweat all night. Although you could always remedy being too hot by either sleeping on top of your sleeping bag or unzipping part of it to increase ventilation. So I find it is best to err on the side of being a little too warm. You can think of temperature ratings as a way of comparing different sleeping bags between each other that will perform similarly in the same conditions. But everyone is going to be comfortable at different temperatures so once you determine what your comfort level is for yourself, you can begin comparing different models and features that all have the same temperature ratings. I find that a 20 degree Fahrenheit bag is a good balance for me during the summer, keeping in mind that I'll likely find myself camping once in a while at higher altitudes where the temperatures would be lower. For shoulder seasons, meaning fall and early spring camping, especially at higher altitudes, I may go with a zero degree sleeping bag. Part of the reason I don't use a zero degree bag all the time is that it's much heavier and bulkier to pack on my bike. Sleeping bags will usually show two different temperature ratings, a comfort and a low. If you find yourself pulling the blankets off at night or blasting your AC at home, you want to pay attention to the lower number. And if you're always looking for extra blankets and putting the heat on at night, then you want to look at the comfort number. Comfort is the temperature that a person will feel comfortable at for most cold sleepers. Lower is the temperature that a warm sleeper would feel comfortable at. This means if you tend to feel cold at night and need extra warmth, you should base your purchase on the comfort number being the lowest temperature you expect to encounter. So let's say you're a cold sleeper and you plan to camp where it will get down to about 20 degrees Fahrenheit. You may be comparing two sleeping bags, one with a 30 degree comfort rating and 20 degree lower rating. You will most likely not feel warm in that sleeping bag at 20 degrees. And let's say you're also looking at another sleeping bag with a 20 degree comfort rating and 10 degree lower rating. This is the bag you should purchase because it should keep you warm and comfortable at 20 degrees. This can be figured out at home. First, just determine if you're a cold sleeper or a warm sleeper, and then you know what rating to pay attention to. Then you can determine the lowest temperature you expect to encounter and base your choice on that number. Once you've decided what temperature rating you're gonna need, the next decision would likely be insulation. Uh, what insulation are you gonna go with, down or synthetic? There are pros and cons to each. Down offers a better weight to warmth ratio and is more compressible than synthetic fills. The downside is that it will not work well when wet because the down feathers clump together and it loses its loft, which is what insulates you. And down also takes a long time to dry. However, most down sleeping bags are treated with a water resistant element, which should help minimize the negative effects of moisture. 
Down is typically more durable, which will help justify the money you're going to spend on it because down is very pricey. Also, down can be sourced from either goose or duck feathers, and some people prefer to purchase responsibly sourced down. This is a good way to ensure that no animals were mistreated for the down in your sleeping bag. And one last thing on down, it is measured in fill power from 450 to 900, and this basically tells you how much the down will loft in cubic inches per ounce of down. The higher the number, the more expensive the bag is likely going to be. Okay, so now about synthetic. Synthetics are not as sensitive to moisture and it dries out a lot quicker. It will continue to retain heat when wet and is much less expensive. They can be bulkier though and they don't have as good of a weight to warmth ratio. In other words, a 30 degree synthetic bag will probably weigh more and pack larger than a 30 degree down bag. Now let's talk about sleeping bag shapes. There are several to choose from that can drastically affect your comfort at night. Mummy bags offer the best heat retention and the snuggest fit. The narrow shape keeps the insulating fill close to your body, maximizing its warmth benefits. In a mummy bag, you're going to roll with the bag rather than inside of it, and this can seem restrictive for some people. You can shed some bulk and weight with a mummy bag compared to other styles, though. Mummy bags have a hood that can keep your head warm at night, although honestly for myself, even when using a mummy bag, I typically just wear a knit hat. The gist of it is that mummy bags are good for cold conditions or weight savings, though they can be used in the summer as well. Rectangle bags give you a little more space for moving around inside the bag, which means they can feel a little more drafty or well ventilated depending on your preferences and conditions. If you roll around a lot at night, this might be a good option for you. They also work great for summer camping. They will keep you warm in colder temperatures, but just not as efficiently as a mummy bag. They will probably take up more space than a mummy bag, and so they're not as good for weight and bulk conscious campers. Semi-rectangle bags are a hybrid of the mummy and rectangle shapes. This offers a balance of space and warmth that would be the strong points of the mummy and rectangle styles. Shape of sleeping bags really comes down to personal preference. I haven't found that one style works better than the other for motorcycle camping, although I tend to go for the mummy style because of the volume it saves in my side cases, and I don't mind rolling around with the bag rather than inside of it. Another feature to look at is the fabric of the sleeping bag. The inside should be soft and comfortable to the touch, and that's really personal preference. The outside, though, is a little more important. You can look for what's called ripstop fabric that's reinforced with stronger fibers and helps any holes or tears from getting out of control. They're easy to recognize by looking at the fabric, and they'll have a grid-like pattern that's easy to see. The fabric will typically either be polyester or nylon, which doesn't make as big of a difference as the treatments of the fabric. This is what you should be looking for when shopping for a sleeping bag, the treatments used on the fabric. You'll need to determine what's important to you in terms of features. Some of these bags will be treated with water repellents, which is useful for unexpected damp weather. Others can be treated with antimicrobial agents that help keep your sleeping bag from smelling. This is good if you're on a long trip and you're camping frequently. There are others and also combinations of different treatments, so make sure to factor that into your decision. A few more considerations on sleeping bag options and accessories. Stash pockets can come in handy to keep your phone warm overnight, which prevents the battery from discharging and draining on a cold night. Stash pockets are a good place to keep anything you don't want to lose track of in the mix of all of your gear. Contact lenses, bike keys, or medications, for example. You should also take a look at the zippers before buying. Some manufacturers will add a zipper shield or cover to prevent snagging. This is an invaluable feature because I have woken up in the middle of the night feeling cold, wanting to zip my sleeping bag up tighter, only to have it snag and then have to wrestle with the zipper before giving up and just tucking the flap under me because I couldn't fix it while I was half awake and shivering. That's not fun. You may also want to look for a two-way zipper that will give you extra ventilation options like unzipping just the part by your feet. This definitely adds a lot to the comfort level of the bag. Most sleeping bags come with a storage bag and a stuff sack. The storage bag is looser and allows the fill to loft while being stored. This will extend the life of your sleeping bag. If it doesn't come with a stuff sack, you may want to buy one to help minimize the space the bag takes up in your side cases. And don't store your sleeping bag in the stuff sack for long periods when you aren't using it because this will damage the fill and it won't be able to loft as efficiently. Some sleeping bags will have a sleeve integrated into the underside of the bag for sliding your sleeping pad inside. This helps keep you and your bag on top of the sleeping pad for the night, which is a useful feature. Some sleeping pads have features that offer the same result, so again it's important to factor in what sleeping pad you'll be using with the bag and consider everything as a part of one team. 
So we talked about sleep systems and how they work together. We went over temperature ratings and how each person will be comfortable in similar bags at the same temperature. So once you determine your comfort level, you're able to compare different bags and their features that will all keep you warm at the same temperature. We also talked about downverse synthetic fills and their pros and cons, and also optional accessories and features to consider. My personal preference is synthetic fill because I replace my bag more often because I tend to use it so frequently. They are also cheaper and I'm a budget conscious traveler. Like I said earlier, I prefer a 20 degree bag for summer camping trips and whenever it might be extra cold, I use a zero degree bag. I also prefer the mummy style, but the reason for that is that they pack smaller. I use one that's a little loose on me so I don't feel restricted. For my setup, I'm pretty sure that my sleeping bag takes up the most bulk of anything in my camping setup. So what I sometimes do is buy a dry bag just for the sleeping bag. Usually a 30 liter is good because the sleeping bag, it only weighs a few pounds and I can take the dry bag and stuff it in there and strap it pretty much anywhere on the bike. This saves valuable storage space inside my cases or duffel bag and still protects the sleeping bag. So if you enjoyed this video and you're looking for more information on motorcycle camping gear, tips and tactics, I actually put together a playlist right here. And also if you want to deep dive on topics like just like this, you can check out my book, The Fundamentals of Motorcycle Camping, which covers all the intricacies of gear selection for motorcycle camping and much more. There's a link in the description box down below, as well as a link right below me. Anyways, that's it for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.